Hey everybody, welcome to Act 2 of Extra Time. I'm Greg Lawless alongside Jason, the producer. As we said earlier, Shep Messing is out this week. In Act 2, scheduling conflicts. Basically, we're going to look at the strength of schedules. This is not the BCS, so it's not as complicated as that and trying to figure everything out. But we'll look at some of the strength of schedule for the teams that are still on the cusp of getting in the playoffs or are just in that playoff zone. And we said uh, yesterday that Basically, there were seven teams fighting, but actually we're going to give you eight teams that are uh, still fighting because I'm going to insist that Kansas City belongs in here. I fought Craig on this. i got to be honest with you. I don't think Kansas City, based on not, not numbers and not who they're playing and where they're playing, but how they're playing. They're not, they don't look cohesive as a team. But they're you not insist defending that well. Salt Lake belongs in there. I think Salt Lake has okay. a better chance. Salt Lake has one game, uh, has played one extra game than Kansas City. Uh -huh. And they're only three points ahead. So therefore, let's assume that Kansas City wins that game. I know it's a big assumption. Then they're even on points, right? Sh sure. Now, you have made this argument that Kansas City is playing uh, worse than Real Salt Lake right now. And I'm not sure I agree. I think Kansas City is playing consistently at a lower level. Salt Lake's problem is... Over the is full season, perhaps, yes. No, but right now? E even over the second half of the season, since the All-Star break. They're, I haven't been impressed. Besides, if you look at the four goals they put up against New England, again, where the, New England was down a man and missing Shalry Joseph, mm -hmm. they haven't really been scoring. They haven't looked very cohesive as, they as an offensive. They are undefeated in their last three games, Kansas City. I'm just going to point that out. Undefeated and they two wins and a draw. They beat New York on a fluke goal. A, a, I'm looking at what's New going York. on. Fine. But I'm looking at what's going on on the field, and I'm not impressed with what's going on in the field. Okay. Why I think Salt Lake is in a better spot is because Salt Lake, while they have played some very bad games, they've had more of an up-and-down year. They've had more of an up-and-down... But this down is not the time of year to be down. Uh, I, I agree, agree with you. I agree <laughs> with you. Up and down. But, but they're down right now, and this is not the time of year for that. But they've showed that they can get to a higher level. All right. And I think that high... So if Kansas City is playing here the whole time and Salt Lake is going up and down, mm -hmm. I think Salt Lake has shown that they can get up to a competitive level, a level that could get them into the playoffs. Well, I think maybe the thing that's going to help Salt Lake most is that the strength of schedule of the opponents that they're playing is very weak. If you actually look at the list... Of the eight teams that are fighting for those final four spots, <laughs> Salt Lake actually has the seventh hardest or the second easiest schedule. It's New England that has the hardest one with that .605 uh, That's what you get when you have percentage. to play Columbus twice in your and last Chicago. four games. And Chicago. you got to yep. play Chicago. Plus, you're going to a much uh, more difficult Dallas team tonight on Wednesday night. D.C. and then Kansas City is right under there. So maybe when you look at Kansas City and Real Salt Lake, it looks a little bit better for Real Salt Lake. Toronto has the easiest schedule uh, with a .322. And this is what we pointed to yesterday in talking about it. Toronto needed to get that one point to yeah. set themselves up for this last three-game run. Yep. They have two games at home that are very winnable. If they can beat Salt Lake, who hasn't been a great road team and, like we said, have been very up and down. They have San Jose yep. at home. And then in the final game of the season, this is what I actually got real excited about, is the final weekend of the season, looks like there's going to be a lot of meaningful games where one team gets in, one team doesn't. They have to go to New York, and they're probably going to have to win that game, but it's a winnable game. Granted, New York's been better, but for Toronto, it's a winnable game, and I'd love to see the Toronto contingent that goes down to New York. I bet it would look like a Toronto home game if they had that game in New if, York. If that's the game that and it could get them, them into the playoffs. playoffs. Yeah, you got to figure all the, the red patch boys will be hopping on buses and yep. <laughs> book your ticket <laughs> now if you're in Toronto. To it's going to be expensive. As it is. And, uh, let's look a little bit at FC Dallas. These guys have been the spoilers of the last couple of weeks. Jeff Cunningham flying high. They now have the best offense in MLS since the All-Star break. They're averaging 2.75 goals per game. And it's really the Cunningham-Ferrera partnership that is, is the catalyst for all of this. Yeah, I mean, give credit to Dave Vandenberg as well. Yes, but good point. you have to look at Ferreira as a player who almost probably almost didn't get a chance. When Dallas was losing at the beginning of the season, so many times foreign players in MLS are judged very quickly. And he came in and he wasn't really doing too much. You know, every now and then it'd be a good play or two. But 
so many players, I feel like, are shipped out after half a season of not really doing well. Ferreira really had the time to settle in, to learn his teammates' tendencies, to find his place on the team, and now he's gelling with them, and they look successful. Well, there's another aspect to this as well, though. When Ferreira first came in, he wasn't playing alongside Jeff Cunningham. He was playing alongside Kenny Cooper. Right, with Jeff Cunningham coming off the bench or sometimes right. as a second forward, they really didn't have the mix. So it's funny that the best move that Dallas made all season is probably the move that nobody in Dallas, except for Jeff Cunningham, yeah, wanted to make, and that was right. selling Kenny Cooper. Yeah. So it's really worked out for them. I wonder what this sets up for next year, though, with a team like Dallas, with a young team, and now getting to know each other and playing well. Well, it's a team that Charles Hyman has slowly built in the, into the form that he wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. Another team that has been built in the way that their coach wanted to be was the Columbus Crew. However, they were built the way Ziggy Schmidt wanted them to be. Now with Robert Warziha in charge, he has them flying high. Columbus right now, the class of MLS, and really... Guess what? It still works. It Whether still it's works. Ziggy or Warziha, it still works. Right. And Columbus really showed it this weekend, dismantling an L.A. team without Beckham that just wasn't the same. Well, Guillermo Barroscolotto obviously is, is the class of the class, if you will, mm -hmm. for Columbus. But another player who I think is playing very well, Eddie Gavin. I mean, this is, it seems to me like he's playing the best football of his career. Yeah, at least his, since his, his rookie year. When his he was long, long career. He's so young. <laughs> he's played for so long that it's crazy that Eddie Gavin has had the ups and downs he yeah. has. But he really is. He's he's found his role on this team. Yep. He knows what he's doing. He knows where he can go and when to be there. He's a very smart player. Can anybody beat Columbus? Can anybody beat Columbus in in one game? Yes, it's possible, but if you were going to bet, you'd probably be betting on Columbus, especially now that it looks like they're going to have home field until the final. So, you know, if Seattle were to somehow make the final and play at home against Columbus... That might be the know, tough one. That's yeah. the, the one scenario that Columbus doesn't want to see. <laughs> Columbus versus Seattle at Quest Field for MLS Cup. And I'll tell you this, though, also. With Beckham, the Galaxy are a different team. So, True. So, they, yes, they beat LA, but... If they played a full-strength L.A. team, I think it would be a much com more competitive game. That might be true, but at the same time, when Columbus doesn't have Scalotto, they still win. So I, That's I mean, true. You know, They're much deeper the than Galaxy any team in this league, except up. for Houston. Columbus, obviously the class of MLS, and they actually secured their playoff spot uh, this past week. They will be getting ready to maybe make it back to MLS Cup Final, and you could join us at the MLS Cup Final with the... Guest reporter contest that we're running here on Extra Time. Check out our website on MLSnet.com for all the details. In Act 3 on Thursday, we'll be looking at two games with potentially devastating consequences.